What's up guys, Justin here with thingysketchupessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out all the new features contained inside of the new version of D5 Render that just came out, version 2.9. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So there's a ton of interesting features contained inside of this new release. Stick around to the end and I'm gonna show you how to create a phasing animation using the new phasing animation function inside of D5. To start out, if you wanna find out more about all the new features, you can go to the D5 render forum post where they go through everything that's contained inside of this new version. But I wanted to highlight some of the most important and interesting things inside of this version. So first off, and this is an absolutely massive feature, is the terrain function. We now have the ability to create custom terrain inside of D5 Render. And so there's a few different ways you can go about this. And if you have a completely blank scene, you may need to click on the button right here in order to add the terrain. Right now, the terrain already exists in my scene. And so then if you select the terrain, notice how on the right hand side, you're gonna have options for different things. So. For example, so there's an upward brush, a downward brush, an eraser, a smooth, and a flatten. And so those are all pretty self-explanatory. One thing I want you to note is notice how um, as you add terrain in here, the stuff that's steeper is going to have the grass um, kind of removed from it like this. But you can use this in order to add those things, probably the flatten option is a really good option if you're trying to create like plateaus or workable areas or something that a house is going to go on that kind of thing so you can adjust the size of the brush as well as the strength of the brush using these sliders right here now one thing you can do is if you want to create some more like randomized terrain you can use a brush texture in order to do that so for example, notice how if I was to just take this whole thing, let's make it real big. So we're gonna make a real big brush right here. And we're just gonna add. Notice how this is going to use a brush texture in order to add terrain right here. Notice how this has created terrain um, that's very similar to like a mountain, right? So these brushes are gonna give you much better detail in here if you actually want more mountainous terrain. So you've got several different brushes for doing that. These are really, really good for adding this kind of detail in the background like this. So if you want to have mountains behind your model or something like that, um, these are definitely good for that. And so down below, you've got the option to add a height map. And so if you click on the plus, notice what this is going to do is this is going to pop out a bunch of height map options. Notice how a bunch of these are pro, but some of them aren't. Um, so you can kind of scroll down here and say that you wanted to add, let's look for something interesting. Maybe let's pull in this Arctic right here. So we're going to download this and bring this in. Well, notice what that's going to do is that's going to use this as a height map in here. And this is actually interesting because it's interfacing with some of the work I've already done, right? Notice how it's taking the stuff that I've already created and it's incorporating it in this. But if I click, what this is going to do is this is going to kind of stamp this onto our terrain. We're going to go ahead and erase this right here, but you've got the ability to adjust this using the slider, which is actually really cool. You can like stamp this on here and then you can adjust like this. So notice how you can adjust the fall off of the edges right here. Then you can also adjust the blend mode, but you can use this in order to add multiple different height maps. I think you're currently limited to 10, but let's say we brought this island in right here. You can use this in order to create a mountain range or something like that. So notice how you've also got options in here for different material templates. So say I wanted this to be more of a snowy scene, I could bring in the Snowland material template and drag this in. Right now I've dragged the beach on here and you can see how everything is very sandy. But once this Snowland downloads, what I can do is I can drag it in and that's going to change this so that the materials in my scene are going to be snowy instead. I think you may just have to click on this, not drag it in actually. But notice how now the materials associated with this are snowy rather than sandy. And then over here on the right hand side, notice how you also have options in here to paint textures. And so notice how I can use this as a texture brush, but you can pick different texture materials in here and you have six textures to pick from or six slots to pick from right here. But say you want a different material, you can go into your materials right here. We're gonna go into ground. So outdoor ground right here. 
we'll actually go into natural raw material and say we had this deciduous woodland right here. So we're going to take that and we're going to replace that with this deciduous woodland material. Well, notice how then I can select this, whoops, and I can paint that woodland material in here like this. So we can paint this in. We could also swap it out with a different material or swap one of these others out with a different material. So say we picked this mossy cliff right here. We're going to select mossy cliff and add it. But then you can also adjust the material that's applied to sloped areas. So for example, if I click in here and adjust the erosion, right? Notice how I'm going to see more of this material showing through like this on my slopes. And you can also do the same thing with the snowy material on your peak. But notice how you can use this to adjust the altitude at which these materials are applied. Oh, and one other thing you're really going to like on this. So notice how if I select this object right here, right click on it and click on create scatter area. What that's going to do is that's going to create a scatter area wherever that material lives in your scene. So right here where I place this mossy woodland, notice how I can bring assets in. So I'm just going to click on the button right here. We'll go with, we'll go with this tree right here. So I'm going to click on it. It's going to download. And then we can bring that in and notice how this is going to scatter that wherever that material is. So this is a fast way of setting up scatters in your scene for environments, which is actually like super cool and super easy to use. And then, I mean, obviously you have the ability to adjust things like the density, just like we did before. To have more or less trees in here, but this is a fast way to get that set up. So we've also got new options for post-processing images. So if I click on AI post-processing, and so if we double click on an image, notice how there's an option over here for AI enhancer, as well as AI style transfer. And so there's been improvements to the AI enhancer. So if you click on this, this has gotten even better. And so notice how you can isolate parts of the image like this. And I think this was a feature that was already in here, but this allows you to actually select certain pieces and you can enhance them just by clicking on the AI enhancer feature, just like this. And this is going to optimize things like details in your scene. And so I like that it gives you the ability to um, see the difference using this slider right here for the before and after, but you can use this to enhance different parts. There's also an option for AI style transfer, which is going to allow you to create more of a stylized look. So say you wanted this to be cartoony, you can click on AI style transfer right here, and that's going to generate that stylized look of your image directly in your scene. And so this is actually pretty cool. <laughs> this, this cartoonish image is actually really awesome um, if you look at it. So this is really interesting what you can do with this tool. Um, and there's multiple different styles in here, right? There's the watercolor, there's the pencil sketch, there's the scale model. You've got all of these different things, but I absolutely love this cartoon result. Actually, this looks really awesome. So lots of fun stuff you can do with the AI style transfer. And so we've now got options over here for things like random spacing and direction. So for example, notice how if I drag random spacing up here, as well as doing a random offset, and a random direction, what that does is that allows me to randomize the way these are placed in here, which is super cool. Um, and you can adjust the width of that random offset just by clicking and dragging this. But you can use this in order to create more random vegetation along paths, which is one of my favorite functions that I've seen in these kind of like brush placement tools. So you've also now got options in the right menu for randomization of size, as well as rotation and location using these options right here. So you can use this in order to randomize things inside of your scene like this. Then there's also a reset feature, which is right here, which will place those objects back where they originally were. So if you get too far off or whatever, you can just click on reset and just take them back to their original um, settings. But this is a really fast way to randomize multiple objects in here. I could see myself using this with trees a whole lot. So there's also an option 
to pop out a details page on the asset browser. So now you can click on these different assets and you can see things like the file size, the size of the asset, other things like that. So you can see information about the different things in your library, including things like size, which I think is especially valuable um, just by clicking on them inside of the browser. So if you're dealing with complex geometry, there's now an option in the file menu for the FPS booster, which is going to improve your uh, frames per second when you're dealing with complex meshes inside of D5. So you can access that just by clicking over here and clicking on the FPS booster option right here. Now, I'm not sure what the ups and downs of that are. There's gotta be some kind of trade-off. Otherwise it would just like do it all the time. So I'm not sure what it's doing in the background, but if you are getting slow frames per second, you can definitely click on that FPS booster to see if you get a boost inside of your scene. Note that that is not going to work if you have an AMD graphics card. Now there is an option in here now for the text to 3D model. So let's say we wanted to create a classic rustic table right here. We're gonna go ahead and click on generate, but notice how there's an option for voxel. And so what voxel is going to do, and let's go ahead and click on this and see what it gives us. It's not a super good prompt, but let's see what it gives us. Um, this is going to give us the ability to generate that in that voxel style made of blocks. So you can see how this is trying to generate a 3D model using that prompt right here. All right, so you can see how we've got a few different options, but if we bring one of them in, so let's go ahead and pick this first table, drop it into our scene like this. You can see that that has actually created a table in a voxel style right here. So there is AI model creation capability in here, but also the ability to generate that more like voxelized model geometry. So, so one thing they've highlighted in their release video is they have Blender 4.2 in geometry node support, which as a guy who's used Blender, I find really interesting. Using something like D5 to render is significantly easier than setting everything up manually directly in Blender. So having the ability to like bring your models in and also support things like geometry modes is actually really cool. I'll be interested to see how much adoption this idea gets, but I love that this can interface with Blender and you can use it to render out your Blender models. So uh, definitely cool possibilities right there. All right, so now finally, I wanna show you how to use my favorite new feature inside of this new version, which is the ability to create a construction animation. And so this is a model I've specifically set up for construction animation only in the sense that uh, it's set up in SketchUp with the different parts and pieces needed in order for us to generate this. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the D5 Live Sync plugin, we're actually going to use this last option because it allows us to maintain the grouping of our model. But we're going to take this and we're going to export it. We're going to make sure we keep our group structure info to two layers and we're going to export this. What that's going to do is that's going to export your model and keep the model organization. But then we can jump over into D5 and we can import that. So I'm just going to do an import. I'm going to find that model and I'm going to bring it in. And so when we do that, we're going to have to click in our scene in order to place the model, or we should. There it is. So we're gonna click in order to place it right here. But notice how if we click on the object that this brought this in, maintaining the grouping, which is very important because we can toggle the parts and pieces off. Well, now what we have, and we're gonna jump over into the video section, is we have under template, multiple different animation options. And so what we can do is we can click on those animation options and then pick a group. So in this case, for example, I'm gonna pick my floor framing right here. Notice how that selects all of these objects. I'm gonna click on done. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna add that animation to those objects. So now notice how those are gonna fly in to my scene just like this. And so we're gonna do that for all of these different parts and pieces. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into um, template again, and we're gonna pick that drop again. And in this case, what I want is the plywood floor. So for the plywood floor, let's say that we want it to fly in. So I'm gonna click on fly in. I'm gonna pick plywood floor. I'm gonna click on done. So now that plywood floor is gonna fly in to my scene like this. So I can just do that for all the different parts and pieces that are in here. Like now I want my wall framing. So we'll add an effect for wall framing. And I like the drop for the wall framing. So we'll just pick that up, click on done. 
and that framing is dropping in. And you need to do that for all of these, otherwise this is just gonna look like complete. So I'm gonna do that real quick and then we'll come back and look at the result. Okay, so now we've got all our different parts and pieces in here. If I click on play, notice how these pieces are going to slide in just like this, so it's animating that construction process piece by piece. And you can adjust the durations of these if you wanted to, but notice how you're able to really quickly, if you have everything set up the way that it needs to be, you can really quickly create this construction animation that's gonna be rendered in D5. So leave a comment below, let me know what you think about this new version of D5. I'm always excited to see the new features that they're adding, but I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.